yeah, the theme is protecting people's health and our economy it, with the belief that the two are, are intertwined and, uh, you know, without healthy people, we can't have a healthy economy is what the finance minister said yesterday. So really it's sparing no expense on dealing with COVID and get, getting the vaccinations out there as we receive them from the, from the federal government. Uh, and then preparing with a plan to really get the economy going once COVID is over. And really that is the plan to balance the budget a number of years out. Uh, it's not with program cuts or tax increases, it's with growing the economy. So uh, everything is being set to, to do just that. But certainly uh, lots of some very positive news in terms, of, in terms of small business and in terms of tourism and hospitality and for, for our, our area, you know, tourism, most, a lot of the businesses weren't forced to shut, but, but they effectively were shut. So I'm really pleased to see that there's a tourism grant available uh, of 10 to $20,000 uh, for, those, for those businesses. And it does include some sectors that were missed before, including summer camps of which we have a lot of those in, in, in our area as well. Um, so quite a bit to do with tourism. There's also a, a tourism tax credit that's going to be uh, coming out once it's safe to travel and to encourage people to, to visit around Ontario, $115 million tax credit that people will be able to apply for once they travel. And for small business, something that I think is huge is that there's the Ontario Small Business Grant that many businesses, over 100,000 across the province, has received between ten and $20,000. Uh, from that. And that is being, I guess, effectively, if you've already received money, you're going to get the same amount again. So if you're a business that's received $20,000 without reapplying at all, you're just going to automatically get another $20,000. And, you know, I think this has really been a lifeline for many of those businesses that are just struggling to survive and get through COVID. So really pleased with that. And I'll stop now just so you get the chance to ask something. <laughs> no, I wanted to say that's pretty amazing. We heard uh, yesterday that uh, small businesses in Gravenhurst were feeling the crunch quite a bit for COVID, uh, more than seasonality issues. So nice to hear that there is more money um, coming for businesses in Perry Sound Muskoka. The other thing that I noticed that I wanted to touch down on too is um, more money coming to parents, um, which is always a good thing. Yeah, I think that will be something extremely noticeable for the average family. You know, there's been two waves of funding for parents to deal, help deal with COVID and extra expenses of working from home and hydro costs and internet costs, et cetera. So that's been doubled in this third wave. So for each child, it'll be $400. And uh, for special needs ch a child, it'll be $500. So uh, a big shot in the arm, a big help for families that are dealing with additional costs of COVID. So getting into <clears throat> some, and getting into the weeds a bit here with it, um, you know, there was some criticism that there's not a lot of spending, uh, extra spending for education right now. Um, I know you're not the finance minister, but I'm just wondering if you can kind of give a bit of an explanation as to why the government has decided not to put more money into that specifically. I find that an interesting criticism. I think there's been record spending in, in education the last uh, the last year, and and there's plans for increased spending in education. So that you know, I, I, I understand the opposition. That's what they're deciding to criticize. But I, I I just don't see any merit in it. There's all kinds of money going to education, and and uh, really been no expense spared in terms of dealing with COVID and trying to adapt to online learning, et cetera. So. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, I find that weak criticism. Moving in the other direction, I see money being spent towards uh, long-term care and especially long-term care and hospitals as well. And I'll talk about long-term care first because I hear there's more beds coming as well. Um, could that benefit? I know we've already seen some extra beds being added to both Perry Sound and Muskoka, but could we see, um, you know, future benefits to our long-term care homes as well? Uh, certainly, I mean, probably one of the biggest dollar values is for in increasing the amount of care that the seniors will receive in long-term care. So there's been a commitment by the government to move to four hours direct care per senior in long-term care. And that's there's a huge price tag to that, but well worth it. So it's $4.9 billion over four years to implement that increased care. So uh, as well as, uh, you know, there's a huge demand for 
long-term care beds. So the government's plan is to build 30,000 new long-term care beds. And in comparison with the past government, over 10 years, they, they increased the number by 600. So this is a big expansion. And we've seen some uh, in the Huntsville area and just recently announced in Perry Sound as well, some of those new long-term care beds as that plan rolls out and, and more monies, as you mentioned in the budget, to, directed to uh, to the long-term care sector as well. And on the hospital side, because we're still looking at possibly having two rebuilds of our hospitals here in Muskoka, um, I, you know, I know that process is still going through. We didn't specifically see it announced in the budget with some other examples that were being brought up. Uh, you know, Hastings Prince Edward was one. Um, but again, do you suspect some of that money is going to go towards the rebuild of our hospitals? As you mentioned, there wasn't anything specific in this year's budget with regard to, but I think that process is is ongoing. So I, you know, I'm not worried that somehow it's being stalled. But there was mention of I believe it was 3,100 additional uh, beds and hospitals uh, that are part of our, the the budget. And also, there has been uh, increased funding. I think that's probably the more important thing that, especially with Muskoka Algonquin Healthcare, they've had a substantial working deficit for as long as I can remember. And I've many times advocated to get them one-time funding. And I think there's recognition that the medium-sized hospitals need more funding to be sustainable. And, and uh, I'm hopeful that that's going to happen, be happening going forward. Last thing I want to touch down on is something you just mentioned, but again, I want to bring it back up again, is the backyard tourism um, benefit that they're, you know, they're promoting here of, of people staying within Ontario to enjoy tourism. Um, and there will be some, um, some money put towards that as well, helping people kind of recoup some of their costs when they're, when they're spending money in Ontario. Can you give me some more details on that, Norm? Sure. And, and, and there's a, a tourism task for ministry there's tourism task force that's also at work looking in detail at innovative ideas and this, with representation I think Leah Leslie from the Marriott in our riding is on that task force uh, I, I also get a spot to in fact they're meeting today to to look at uh, ideas and they're they're brainstorming all kinds of innovative ideas but yes there was also uh, 15 million dollars towards the regional tourism or, or organizations like uh, Explorers Edge to assist with with tourism. And my feeling is that, uh, you know, we've all been so tied down for a year now that we're dying to get out to do things. So I think with the tax credit, with the support for the tourism sector, I, I really think it's going to take off and be a great year once we're, once we're vaccinated. But certainly the minister has, has spared, you know, no expense uh, and, and lobbied really hard with the finance minister to get it recognized that tourism was hit hardest and first and longest by COVID. So, uh, but I am optimistic with all the plans that are out there that it's going to rebound and, uh, and uh, we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna have a great year and years to come. Well, Norm, I just want to mention, you know, there is a lot more to go through here. We, we just don't have the time to break down every single thing, but I'm sure as the days and weeks and months go on, we'll hear more details from you about money spent in Perry Sound and Muskoka. Um, so we'll look forward to that. And thank you for taking the time today. My pleasure. Thanks a lot, James.